Okay, this is the second half of uh, finding the transfer function of the DC motor with a load. Um, before we actually solve for uh, uh, the transfer function, I want to make it clear what we did here with uh, uh, we had this term, the di dt. We used the properties of the Laplace transform, which says that the Laplace transform of the derivative of a signal is s times the Laplace transform of the signal. And if you're doing the bilateral Laplace transform, that's all there is. If you're doing the unilateral Laplace transform, then you have this initial condition. So just to make sure that was clear, we're basically also using the linearity properties of the Laplace transform that some constant times a signal transforms to the constant r, in this case, times the Laplace transform of the signal. So that's basically all of the Laplace transform properties that we've used so far. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to solve um, or we want to combine these two equations. We have this guy here. Let's see just how cluttered we can make this. And we have this guy here. Okay. Um, again, I'm setting initial conditions to zero because I'm going to uh, uh, find the transfer function. So let's just make the initial condition chunk go away. The same over here. That will make our lives a little bit easier. Okay, so what we're going to do then is um, we need to have, when we're done, we need to have v sub s because that's our input, and we need to have omega because that's our output. The thing we don't need to have is i, because that's the current. We're not actually looking explicitly at the current. So it looks like what we can do is, in this bottom equation, we can solve for i um, and then plug that value for i in here and here, then work out the whole, uh, uh, do all the algebra and so on that needs to be done. And that will give us what the, uh, 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 it'll give us an equation that relates the Laplace transform of the input signal to the Laplace transform of the output signal. And from that, we can figure out the uh, transfer function. So if I take this expression down here and solve it for i, I get i of s. Let's make some of this go away. This has gotten really messy. Okay, so I get i of s is equal to i sub l k or over kt times s omega s. Okay, so again we've taken this equation and we've solved it for i. Having done that, let's just get rid of it because it's uh, taking a valuable screen space. Okay, now I'm going to take this expression for i sub e, or i of s and plug it in for i of s here and i of s here. And when I do that, I'll end up with the following expression. I have that v sub s of s is equal to r times i sub l over kt s omega of s plus l s i sub l over kt s omega of s plus kb omega, oops, I don't need a parenthesis there. Make that ugly parenthesis go away. kb omega s. 
Okay, so now I have my equation that relates the Fourier transform of the input to the Fourier transform of the output. Now you'll notice that I have the Fourier transform of the output in three different places. So I can, and every term on the right hand side of the equal sign has this Fourier transform of the output, omega s. So I can actually factor that out of this expression. Let's see, we'll pick an appropriate factoring color. You're thinking, oh, that's the ugliest thing you could have chosen. Um, so I'm going to take each of these omega s's out of everything that's inside the parenthesis. Okay, and uh, hopefully you can see now that I'm starting to get to the point where I can almost get the ratio of omega s to v sub s. We'll delete, oops, let's not delete everything. Okay, so I have this expression, and if I clean it up a little bit, I can write this as um, v sub s is equal to omega of s times, we'll take this term first, I have an s squared l i sub l over kt plus, and we take this term here, s times r i sub l over kt plus kb. Okay, so this thing in the square brackets, this guy here, you can see is actually a polynomial in s. Okay, now again to get the transfer function h of s, here we'll actually write that in a brighter color since this is important h of s is, again, omega of s over v sub s of s. So basically, if I divide through by this polynomial, and also divide through by both sides of the equation, I'm dividing both sides of the equation by the, by the polynomial, and divide both sides of the equation by v sub s, I get this ratio of omega, sub s, uh, omega of s divided by v sub s of s is equal to 1 over this polynomial, s squared l i l k t plus s r i l k t plus k b. Okay, so in a sense we're done we'll actually, uh, probably in the next video, um, plug in some numbers. Well, actually at this point I probably won't do another video on this and I actually won't plug in the numbers. Uh, we'll use the same expression in a subsequent video to find h of t, the impulse response of the system. Um, you can see that uh, the uh, transfer function for this case is the ratio of polynomials. 1 is a polynomial of order 0, and the s squared plus uh, the constant, this constant times s squared plus this constant times s plus kb, that's a polynomial of order 2. Uh, this is the result that you would expect any time you have a system whose dynamics are described by constant coefficient linear differential equations, which is what we had with the DC motor model. So, um, again, this represents then the computation of H of S. We're actually going to have lots of uh, different um, things we can do with this, which we will do in subsequent videos.